Hey everyone, welcome to the Ono Tech channel. I'm Jay, your host, and today this is uh, our first live stream, I think. Oh no, we've probably heard them more live streams. I know this, this channel we don't do too much on, but hey, we're going to start doing more. Anyway, so just this past week, I was competing in one of those online auctions. So I like to look at online auctions because sometimes you can find really great deals on equipment and gear and stuff that you want to use. And since I'm a YouTuber, that's still really, really small. Money is always an object. So I've been looking for gear every once in a while. And so I found this one auction where this sound engineer who had their own studio, a recording studio in their home was deciding to downsize and move to another state. He had some stuff at auction and there's a lot of great deals going on, like just crazy stuff for outboard recording gear and stuff like that. That was really, really cheap, especially compared to what you would have to pay for it to buy it new. I didn't really need a lot, so I was just looking at a couple of microphones. And so one of the ones that I did with, actually, the only thing that I won was this. This is the GT, um, the GT, which is called, the GT means Groove Tubes AM30 microphone. And it comes in this box. He had the original box, so let's open it up. Now, at the time, this this microphone first came out in the year 2000, and not too long before this mic came out, the company Groove, to, Groove Tubes, I don't, I think they partnered with or were bought out by Alesis, so that just kind of helped them make, I think, better quality gear. And what this was really supposed to be, it was supposed to be really high quality cardioid um, amps at very affordable prices. And so it comes in this nice hard case. Actually, I've not opened this up. This is, I just picked it up yesterday and now we're opening it. And so he's got the original paperwork, excellent. And the microphone, it comes with a microphone clip. Good, is that it? That's it, okay. Wow, that's a big case. I think part of the reason why it's a big case is because this um, this is part of a series of microphones. Uh, the, the AM30 version is kind of the entry model, the easiest one to get into. At the time that it was released, it was right around $500. I picked it up for about $40 at the auction. So, you know, a really good deal for it. Now, part of the reason the box is bigger because some of them do have external amps that come with it. This one does not, and here it is. This is the GTAM30. It is a cardioid. This one, I was told that you can also replace, you can replace the, um, what do you call it? The, the, the capsules at the top. I don't really know how to do it. If it's pretty weighty with construction, XLR connection here. It does have a pad, 15 dB pad. Right there, you can kind of see that there, zero dB, 15 dB. And then it has a low pass, high pass filter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to plug this in. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this cable. This is a very specialized XLR cable, very high quality. This was made for me, custom made for me by Alan Williams from Sound Speeds. And every blue moon, when Alan has the time, he, off he offers to make people cables. We're using like just the finest parts. So the, the noise the signal, the, the, the signal to noise ratio is super, super low. The connections are super, super high quality. I believe these are Nutri connectors Nutri connectors and they're these particular type of Nutri connectors that kind of have this crimping on the inside, so you don't really want to take it apart. It's got RF interference, and the cable themselves is made by Canare, which is super high. Like you probably can't get any better quality cable than this on the market today. And so I'm really excited to have them. I was I wanted to get some during the first round that he did uh, back in 2020. Yeah, and so I was not able to uh, to participate in that. I was able to participate in his 2022 round, 
and I'm super stoked to finally try it. So these are, this is a 10 foot cable. I mean, look at that. You can kind of see the, uh, the nice little pieces here, the EMC connector. I mean, even the, even this little trigger lock release has a distinctly different feel like um, compared to the, the, the other ones that I have. So I've got this other one, a company called Live Wires, which you're listening through it now. And I'm using the Electro Voice RA20 with the Live Wire cable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it out and talk a bit, and then you can tell for yourself. So hang on one moment. All right, I think, yeah, there we go. So that's that's the sound speeds cable. Now you can, I'm, I personally am not listening through headphones at the moment, so it's hard for me to tell what the sound is. When I listen to it again later, I will. I should just probably plug in some headphones. Well, I wasn't listening to it earlier, so I won't be able to tell. Anyway, so that is, this is the RE20 electric voice with the sound speeds cable. And so this signal to noise ratio will be really, really low, really, really high quality. So we're going to get the best fidelity possible and the best comparison. And just to let you know my signal path, I'm running the RE20 through the sound speeds cable into a universal audio Volt 1 interface, which then runs to a Mac Mini M1, and then which goes to the stream yard and goes out to you. So... It is as about high fidelity as I can get it. The gain on the Volt 1 is set to full because this is a gain-hungry mic, but happily the UA will power it. All right, actually, well, I will listen. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Check, check, check. Uh-oh. Check, 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 check. Okay, there we go. Now I can finally hear it. Okay, so this is the RE20. And what's there to do? Step two, switch and see what the difference is. Check, 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 check. Oh, there we go. Okay, that, that's better. It's, whoa, it's pretty wonky. Hello, can you hear me? All right, so that's a little bit better. All right, I was trying to figure out what, what is, what is, what, whoa. This, oh, that's pretty heavy duty. All right, so I'm going to hold this back because I was too close. 
So you can kind of see down here, there's... My understanding is that it's supposed to be front address for for the, the microphone. Let's see here. So the, I'm looking at sound on sound. And let's, uh, let's do some reading here so we can get a little bit of... Let me just get the sharing of the screen. All right, so let's read this. This is the AM30. Like the AM11, the AM30 is a solid state mic with a class A FET preamp. I am running this right now with a flat curve and zero dB. I could do the 15 dB cut, but I'm not. That's back to flat and zero. However, its diaphragm measures only three quarters of an inch across and is designed for front rather than side address. So it doesn't sound, you can definitely tell that it's off axis when I'm talking to the side. And then as I come back around, you can see it, it is a bit like, for example, it's it's very sensitive. If I get really, really close, you get a lot of plosives and stuff like that, much more so than the RE20, which I guess is designed for closer applications. However, its diaphragm measures only three quarters of an inch across and is designed for front rather than side address. A six micron gold evaporated mylar diaphragm delivers a good high end frequency response and miniature switches on the body bring in a 15 dB pad and a low cut filter. The response of which is identical to that of the AM11. Three different capsules are provided are available providing a choice of cardioid, super cardioid or omnipolar, even like that kind of polar from this distance it's very it is very sensitive so we would need to use some kind of plosive device you know like a windscreen or perhaps a sock to cover that i'm going to try a little bit from the side it, it seems very sensitive three different capsules are available providing a choice of cardioid supercardioid or omnipolar patterns all of which have a frequency response, which is flat within plus or minus 2 dB all the way up to 2 kilohertz, though their low end response varies slightly. The cardioid model quotes 50 hertz, the supercardioid 80, and the omni 30. The equivalent noise is quoted at 20 dBA with a sensitivity of 16 millivolts Pascal. Is that Pascal? I think, I don't know. At one kilohertz, all very respectable figures. The maximum SPL is 130 dB with a dynamic range of 115 dB. And like all the mics in this range, the output is transform balance. I'm just pulling up the gain a little bit. Running that volt one, it's about three quarters gain. The maximum SPL is with dynamic range of 115 dB. And like all the mics in the range, the, the, output, the output is transformer balanced. Okay, great, great. Constructionally, the microphone is simple and elegant with satin black, satin black cylindrical body and stainless steel grill assembly. The grill cover unscrews to provide access to the capsule while a locking ring above the X outlet XLR allows the body sleeve to be removed for access to the circuitry. So we can take it apart by doing that. The standard of build quality is high with neatly simple glass fiber circuit boards, and the mic is presented in a sturdy aluminum camera case, like massive a camera case. <laughs> you, can, you can probably fit like 20 of these, 20 of these mics. But the posts are really, really... Like, that's... That's not what that, that's what I hope. I'm sorry if you're listening on headphones. Repeating the same test of the AM30 showed to have similar sensitivity with perhaps just a little more airiness of the character, though balanced by very full and well-rounded low end. Positioning for acoustic guitar work seemed just a little more critical than with the AM11, but a little time spent fixing the finding the best spot paid off with first-class results. Bringing in the low-cut switch tames, the pro, bringing the low-cut switch tames the proximity effect to a reasonable extent without thinning out the tone excessively. All right, that's pretty nice. So you really, so this is really best for stringed instruments, things like that. For for voc vocals, it doesn't seem like it's the great place to be, which is which is perfectly understandable. Each different microphones are made for different purposes, but I wanted to give a chance to see what the difference was. All right, let me switch back to the RE20.
what I will say for Alan's build is it's very, very snug. These connectors are super, super snug. No. <laughs> Sorry. Just trying to get this thing to trying to get all the switches working. But um it is a very solid construction. And oh, I think it does sound a, a lot clearer compared to the live wire cable. Wow, that that's that's a nice signal path. Actually, I can kind of hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Appreciate that. All right. Well, that's just a quick little uh, a little observe observation for you to see. This is the GT AM30 microphone. It is a bit sensitive for vocal work, but probably works really great for acoustic. I'm gonna have to give that a try and see how it turns out. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Any thoughts? Love to hear them. What you think? What do you think about the GE20, the, the, the GT AM30 or the RE20? I personally love the RE20. I think it's a great workhorse. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for taking a little time with me. See you guys next time.